But during the time that I was in uh, college, the Chickasaw Nation was beginning to develop. Didn't have a lot, but they were beginning to get started. And I, I thought, I'd like, to re I'd like to be part of that. You know, I, my heritage is embedded deep in me. I mean, I, I know I'm Chickasaw. I was raised by a Scotch-Irish lady, but she always made sure that she knew, that I knew that I was Chickasaw, and she would talk about my dad and the, and the family and all, and had some connection with, with the Chickasaw family. And I, I was just intrigued by the whole idea of having this organization that was for the tribe. So I used to pester people for a job. I mean, wh even when I was in college here at East Central, I'd call people at the Chickasaw Nation. i say, you have any jobs open, you know? I was really anxious to see if I couldn't go to work. Well, I never panned out, so I went to uh, on my first job, which was uh, uh, in accounting. I ran an accounting office for this investor, and I kept... And, and interesting enough, the fellow who owned uh, the companies, he had had a working relationship. In fact, he knew a personal relationship with the governor of the Chickasaw Nation. And so I had met him before, but one day he said, well, just call him on the phone. So he called him on the phone. Here I was just frozen, you know, barely couldn't even think of what I could say to him. But... Um, Things seemed like they were leading me in this direction. I, I don't mean to make any big deal out of that, but it's just like this is what I wanted to do, and there were opportunities and doors that opened that allowed me the, to do it. After working a couple of jobs in the accounting field, my the first job, uh, they moved their home office from Duncan, Oklahoma, to Houston, and I really I wasn't a Houston guy. You know, I, I liked Oklahoma. I didn't really... Uh, want to go, and so I took another job, and I worked for a CPA firm, and so this job opening came at the tribe, so I thought, okay, I'm going to put my name in the hat, so I did, and after a little time, I was able to get go to work for the nation. Mm -hmm. I was really prepared for it with, uh, you know, some management uh, I'd been a sergeant in the National Guard, so I had a platoon, and so I knew uh, some leadership there and then had some experience in management and then accounting. So I had some skills that the tribe needed. Mm -hmm. And so when I went to work, the, the first job I had was in a management role over a department. It's very small department. In fact, the tribe didn't have more than 30 employees working at the time. It was like, okay, uh, we have to make something of this. Mm -hmm. If we're going to make it uh, better, we had about 30 employees, had about, um, we had a budget of about a million dollars, which that's a lot of money, but it was as you know, even back then, the, it didn't stretch. It was all it was federal funds, and the federal dollar has a, a string with every every dollar. You say, okay, this, you get this, but this is what you use it for. That's it. And so, uh, we knew that we needed to have a little more flexibility, be able to do more things. So we set some goals. We felt like that we needed to raise revenue somehow and over a period of time we we're able to develop our strategy of economic development and that would be business development uh, and we saw that as an alternative to the federal funding so first first job as a director uh, of a department, then they wanted to have an accounting department because they were beginning to bring a little more money in. Before, every, every program had a bookkeeper, so we brought all the bookkeepers together, set up a centralized system. That was the job they gave me. And so that was right down my alley. 
you know, had done yeah. things similar to that. So as time went by, um, the, the role changed from like an accounting director to a controller type job, which is very similar, but had more responsibility. Then to a special assistant to the governor, which never dreamed I'd get that far. And special assistant was more of a management role than a support role. And I ended up being over most everything, like an executive director would be, and uh, had to give up some of the accounting as time went by. So by 1979, tribe had a had its first constitution since statehood, and the governor asked me to run with him as the lieutenant governor. And I remember, in fact, it was just on the other side of this wall where my office was. I would uh, I suggested to him that I didn't have any political experience. That my experience had been in business and accounting, and you can imagine how. Some people look at it and account it. They have the things on their sleeves and they have the you know the visor, you know, or sitting there taking care of business and you don't ever get out of their office. Well, I wasn't quite that uh, way. I, you know, I did work with a lot of people. But politically, nobody knew who Bill Anatoby was. Mm -hmm. and, but the governor said, well, don't worry about the politics, I'll take care of that. You just keep doing your job. So I said, okay, we'll do it. So I ran with him as lieutenant governor. Didn't know the first thing really about politics. I just did my job. But for some reason, he decided that he wanted me to get further out, get, you know, in the political realm. More than anything, just to be known, I guess. Uh, and uh, we had a, another constitution that was passed in 1983. And um, so I ran with him again. I, that's a long story in itself about the constitutions. But we, uh, we ran together again, and here I was, still lieutenant governor. He decided not to run in 1987. Uh, you probably see politics at a different level, uh, so at the state level or the federal level, where you have a changeover in leadership. I was an uh, elected official. And if I wanted to stay here, I had to run mm -hmm. for the job of governor. I was so uncomfortable with that. I was like, I had to get out of my shell. So. I, I took all these courses, you know, to prepare myself, you know, all kinds of things to help me. But I felt, I really think what took me over the line was more than anything what I believed in and being able to communicate that to the people. Uh, I don't take a lot of credit for uh, anything. You have people around you that, mm -hmm. that really are helping to get the job done. And so I gave them the credit. And when I go to the, I had to knock on doors and ask people, was it one of the most uncomfortable things I ever did? But after a while, I got the swing of it and people were inviting and were friendly. And, and so I really enjoyed that. Uh, and I really did want to be able to stay. So I think people saw that. And myself and my running mate, we uh, we were elected without a runoff in the, uh, for the governor and lieutenant governor, and that was in 1987. And the job has been challenging. Uh, and... Uh, it's been one that has been, though, very rewarding, uh, emotionally rewarding, because you're able to help people. And that's really what keeps me here, is being able to help people and 
and it helped the organization uh, to be what it needs to be. We went from like uh, these 30 employees when I first came to work here to in 1987 we had about 250 employees and uh, we did have some revenues that were not federal but it wasn't enough to sustain everything that we wanted to do and needed to do. So we began to work really hard at uh, creating new businesses and we had uh, had some things we stumbled, you know, it, it didn't work out and you learn from that probably more so mm -hmm. than you do from your successes. But we're able to build the uh, organization, build the uh, structure that we needed, programs and services, and then the arm for the businesses. And the businesses supplied and do supply revenue to the, the tribe to do the programs that we have. It started out very simple and it just continued to build and we just build on it and build on it. And today we have about, uh, well, it's over 13,000. 13,500 employees. Uh, we have uh, budgets, federal budgets that make up about 50% of what we do. And we have so many services that we're able to offer, things that we couldn't have even dreamed of in 1975 or even 1987. This very building, I, uh, when I was Lieutenant Governor, we were trying to come to terms with what it would take for us to operate uh, without federal funding, because you never know mm -hmm. what's going to happen with federal funding. Um, and uh, so I think we had uh, a $10 million budget at the time. And so we had a meeting and we said, well, what's it going to take for us to be able to make $10 million so we can stay afloat? And we needed. If it's to 10 percent of a of what, 100 million, if you're going to do, so 100 million seemed out of reach at the time. But I told the group that said, you know, we'll never get there if we don't start working at it. Mm -hmm. And now's the time to start. So we we set out on the uh, develop the plan and been working it ever since. Economic development, self-sufficiency services to the people in all the different areas of health care and education, you know, elder uh, youth programs help build this community, not just build wealth, build the community. And, and then the people can, we give them opportunities so they can build their own wealth. Education does it for sure, being able to be on their own.